Thank you. If you had a look at the cyber risk, at the global risk report, you see that cyber risks are once again in the top 10 most likely to happen. And indeed, they have become bigger, better, more disruptive. And that is of a main interest of mine. They have become more political. Last year, I was interested in getting an overview of uh, research output globally in cybersecurity. So I used bibliographical methods to map the research landscape. It's definitely a growth topic, as you can see, doubled from 2011 to 2014, and it's increasing steeply. But what is really interesting, for me at least, 90% of this research is from the technical disciplines. Computer science, uh, engineering, uh, the top cited articles are about smart grid security, control system security, and what is marginalized, even though we have these developments, the political side, the social side, and the economical side. So what we want to do, we want to change this. We want to bring politics to the game, also because cyberspace is man-made. And as we all know, data is power. And the powerful are trying to shape this environment in ways that will actually help them uh, get you know, to their goals, be they economic, strategic, military, whatsoever. So we're saying technology is extremely important and technological solutions are extremely important, but they're not enough to understand the insecurity or the security aspect. We want to fuse the political aspects with the technological aspects to understand how cybersecurity and politics, power politics, are interconnected. Now, very importantly, we do not want to separate, separate either aspect. We need to actually be able to understand how technologies influence politics and how politics are constrained, influenced by technologies. So this is not an either or. For academics, this is not that easy. A concept that helps us do that is the vulnerability. We call it a concept, a lens, uh, to look at this aspect together. A vulnerability can be in machines, in, the, in people, in organizations. And we want to understand <coughs> the emergence, but also the exploitation of these vulnerabilities and the persistence. If you look at the you know, concept of vulnerability, you see how many more we get every year. There's about 100 billion lines of codes programmed each year. Uh, there is about fi up to 50 vulnerabilities per 1,000 uh, lines of code. So we're not getting rid of them. AI might be a solution here, but for the moment, more and more uh, vulnerabilities. We see that some of them are really interesting because you can do smart operations with them, and that's where states come in and how politics comes in. So we see an exploitation of some of them in the context of larger conflicts. And now the system and the problem changes because states have much more time, resources, and intelligence agencies. They like to keep things secret. One of the reasons why vulnerabilities persist is because people keep them secret so they can exploit them strategically. And it's not only about cyber hygiene and good management strategies. It sounds banal, you know, bring technology, politics together, policy together. It's not at all, not only because interdisciplinarity is hard, but also because the data is increasingly being kept secret. A lot more is happening behind closed doors in secretive spaces. So one of the first things we need to do is establish collaborations between stakeholders that can help us get more transparency in, in, in data, more trust in the data that we get. Unpolitical data, not data that is already attributing to particular actors without us understanding the methodology that is behind it. So in sum, what we need to do is to move away from technology as something isolated in actually understanding this problem as something interconnected, an environment of technology, people, society, economics, etc., trying to model these interactions in novel ways, in understanding the complexity and how these um, different aspects co-shape each other. Therefore, and then we will be able to move away from the reactive patching of vulnerabilities, of fixing holes to more proactive solutions where we start to understand how these incentives might be changed that actually keep cyberspace so insecure. Everybody agrees, I am sure, that we're moving into a bright new world of technology and to be able to reap the benefits of this technology. 
We need to make sure that security and trust becomes an integral part of this environment, however it develops in the future. And for that, I believe we need this very broad perspective. Thank you. <laughs>